Hey guys, um, a little short one here, hopefully. Uh, I've got a, uh, it, this one, this little video is going to be about uh, restuffing uh, can capacitors. How I do it. Uh, I've done two, I've done two in the last hour. And it came out great. Uh, but what I'm working on, and I'll show you. What I'm working on is a, uh, let me turn this up, is a Hewlett Packard uh, model 400D as in dog or delta, 400 delta vacuum tube voltmeter. Very nice. So, uh, but it's got a ton of, uh, it's got a ton of uh, can electrolytics in it. One, two, three, four, five. Can you tell which one has been restuffed? No, you can't. I've restuffed these two. Just finished one. I finished this one, I believe. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how I, my, the procedure that I've done. I have never really never restuffed one of these to the degree that I have these. So I'm going to uh, when I turn the camera off here in a minute, I'm going to pull uh, go ahead and mark the uh, leads and everything on this, how it's oriented and all this stuff. I'll pull it out, and then once I get that to that point, then we'll start the uh, decanning process. I guess you could say. So it'd be interesting. I uh, hope uh, might get a like or two out of it. So when I get prepared, I will bring you back. Okay. Um, one of the things that you have to do to get these twist lock caps out um, is get them out. And this is the one that I'm getting out next. So there's a trick to it. And uh, you don't just go twisted on the tabs with a pair of needle nose. Uh, there's a trick to get them out without breaking those tabs. It's effective 99% of the time. So, I need to point this to where I think I have my camera in the wrong spot. Let me move you over here to the other side. Oh, oh. Check out my lighting system. Got to have enough room to work. Reorient you. Uh, yeah, we'll start off with that. Yeah, where are you? Let me find my capacitor. This one here, my light. Wrong spot. Let's get some better light for you guys. Alright, where are you at? I ain't get my... I feel like it's important. There you are. Let me turn this over. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, we're getting there. I need this point here. Let me widen it out a minute. I feel it's important to show you this. You know, back in my TV days, thousands and thousands of years ago. Yeah. We're good now. Anyway, what you do is... Oh, shit. Sorry about my language. Technical difficulty left and right. Quit bumping my camera stand. I'd be alright. Anyway, I was trying to find my pointer. This is the twist lock tab right there. What you do is you grab the capacitor by the top part of the capacitor on the opposite side and you bias it a little bit. So I'm going to take this one off first. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bias it, I'm going to pull against it. In other words, I'm taking the head of the capacitor or the capacitor and pulling it down and in other words, like 
like if I want to take this one off, I'm pushing, I'm pushing it down this way to put pressure on this. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to rock it back and forth. And while I'm putting pressure on it, the little teeth on this thing will bite into the slot that it went through and line up. I've got that one done. I'm going to do the same thing on this one. I'm going to push that way now. Yeah, there's that phone again. Here we go. Putting pressure on it, watching it, just easy, easy, easy. Yeah, I got two done. And if I'm going to listen here, if you can see it, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to put pressure against it. I'm pulling toward me now. I'm just rocking it back and forth. You got to get a good bite on it with a good pair of needle nose. Just rocking it back and forth. It's already wanting to come out and do the same thing for the final one. Just down here. Now I want to push the top of the capacitor that way. Twisting it back and forth. Voila! Free and I didn't break any tabs. Okay, so I'll get set up for the next phase and uh, we'll go from there. i got to see what this text message is about. Okay. Okay, so the next step is we're going to get the capacitor part. Okay. And, uh, where in the living flip is my pointer? Anyway, around the bottom of the capacitor is where they crimp. It's where they crimp. This, there's a metal ring right here. Uh, the, the capacitor and everything in it is aluminum. But there's a metal ring here which allows you to solder to things. And it's crimped onto the bottom of the can and the insulating base here or the terminal base whatever you want to call it of the capacitor so you got to break that crimp uh, and get that ring out so basically all you do take a good pair of sharp thick needle nose you go around the base and you just pick you a spot you can get to here let me and let's see we're going to start we're just going to dig in Grab it a little bit, twist it a little bit, grab it, twist it a little bit, just get it started. Don't take big chunks. Getting again there, getting it again. And I got it started. And you see how I'm peeling it away? And you just keep doing that thing, taking little baby steps, little small bites. You don't want to take big bites. You don't, or sure don't want to put a lot of pressure on your pliers. You can do bad things. Anyway, continuing around. I've never really been successful doing this before, and I decided uh, when I started working this uh, voltmeter, and I saw that it, and every capacitor in it was bad. I said, I'm going to learn a different way. Anyway, that's where I'm at right now. So far, so good. I haven't messed up yet. Now, this capacitor has a uh, has a plastic uh, uh, plastic covering on it, a little clear plastic. And uh, I've been able to save that. Now, I couldn't get it off. I'm just you leaving it on there as a protection, kind of to the metal can itself. But it does come off, and we'll show you that in a minute. But I'm just continuing on. Taking little baby steps. I don't know if you can hear that little yang 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 sound behind me. That's my old. That's that. Uh, it's that RCA uh, uh, clock radio that I restored here a while back. The motor is just it's it's got wear in the motor. The uh, bearings the. Uh, motor shaft itself is uh, the bearing in it is 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 worn. And there's nothing I can do about it except send it off and get it repaired. And I'm not going to do that. That costs more than that radio's worth. It costs 
about $125 to get that done. Uh, and it's not worth it. And it breaks, I'll just let it stay broke. Right now, it's got a little neat little sound. It, you know, I've heard that stuff many times before. It doesn't bother me. All right, I'm almost done going around the capacitor. Now I'm just kind of going back, cleaning up, make, looking, making sure that I don't have any spots that might be tight. Now if you can see, if you can see right there, you can see all the way around that ring, I should be able to take my yellow hand, my big pliers, pull it out. So from that, and it's coming out. Voila! Yeah, something I didn't do. I did. I didn't mark. Almost messed up, but I know where this come from. One thing that you should do is take you a permanent pen before you pull this ring out. Is mark the orientation of the ring in regards to. Just make you a landmark. It doesn't really matter. I usually go where there's a little block square and I just put a dot, I mean a little dash or a little dot, just a little marking. It's important and I'll show you why when we put this thing back together into the vice we're working on. Anyway, there's the ring. Put it aside. Now don't just grab this and start pulling bad things happen. These capacitors, or this particular one, are cemented down here. They usually have a little bit of tar-like substance down here in the bottom, so you got to heat that up. But in this capacitor's case, you got that little metal film on there, and you can see it right there. you got to get that off. So, that just takes a little due diligence. <laughs> Sometimes you got to Heat it up a little bit. Get it warm just a little. Make it pliable. You don't want to melt it. Just get it warm to where it's a little more. Give us a little bit, see? Yeah. Take it off. Put it out of your way. Now you got a fresh can. Now. Where you need a pair of them. You want to soften up all this tar and stuff in here. If you don't know, some may have it, some may not. But we want to soften it up. So what you'll need is a pair of your pliers, your part, and a heat gun. Apply heat to the base, to the top of the capacitor right here. Okay, you get it too hot and it explodes, it'll do your job for you. You know, just push out the end. Get it warm. Well, I say you got to wear gloves to do this. You got to get the ends and the top warm. You know, it's not really worried about the middle. That ought to be enough. Give it a minute. Now, which one is this? This is the 20. I did, first one I did was like this, and I almost broke it. Oop. That wasn't supposed to happen. <laughs> well, that's okay. We're going to continue on. I didn't get it hot enough. Continue on. We'll get it good and warm. We gotta get this out. This next section here, we gotta get it out without damaging it somehow. Or another. And I damaged the other one. So, this actually is your friend. You do not want to harm it if you can help it.
this case you might not be able to help it So, what do we do? It should come out. You just got to do it. Just right. Man, that didn't work. Make a monkey liar out of me. Now, let me get this piece out here. That's a, that rubber, I think, is stuck. That's one biggest problem there. Because all that heat I applied to it, it did not disappear. Didn't realize that before. It's all right. I got it this time. It's unfortunate that it didn't come out when I was ready for it to. This is really need to keep this intact right here, this piece here, or as intact as you can get it, because that's important for putting this thing back together right. So we're down to the bottom here, and of course it's. Uh, it's another little piece of phenolic, I think. And it is stuck like you wouldn't believe. Give me a little more heat. might explode that'd be a YouTube for worthy of YouTube hot enough by George this sucker is in there it's uh, very vital it comes out there we go You need this piece. You have to save everything from everything you can. You need this piece. You need that piece and you need this soft rubbery piece too. You have to have that. Now there's the inside of the capacitor. So how do you get that out now? Well, a pair of pliers. Reach in there, kinda like kinda like gutting a fish. Just reach in there, pull straight out. There it is. A little different on that one there. That was a little difficult. But we got it. Now all you got to do is just clean it up. Now I don't know what this stuff is made of. That's another reason I have gloves on and I'm trying not to touch it. Unless I have to. But Just go in there and clean the junk out of it. Best you can. You got to be perfect. Try not to damage your cap. I know. Anyway, there's your shell. So let me get everything set up and figure out a way to do this a little bit better than the last one, and I'll bring you back. All right, in for a penny, in for a pound, fellers, ladies and gentlemen, and all that. <clears throat> the next step involves a Dremel and a couple of bits. Here is the uh, top or the bottom of the capacitor right here. Very delicate. You can't just willy nilly this stuff. So, what we got to do now is make some access holes in it. And what you want to do is this piece here that we pull out, we need to clean that before we do anything else. It's a little damaged, but just get you an alcohol pad. That seems to work real good. Get you an alcohol pad and wipe it down. You wondering what this blue X is right here? In all my videos, if I have trouble staying in, uh, staying in frame, so I decide I'm going to fix that. I'm going to do like they do on television. You never see the frame, but they stand on it, or marks, I guess you should, they call it. So 
I can do this stuff and not worry about being out of frame. So what I do now, I'm taking this rubber piece and first off, let's go back here. You see them little piece of aluminum sticking up? Cut them all. Can't solder to aluminum. Some of you people have been doing this a long, long time know that. I don't mean to insult your intelligence or nothing. But if you're just starting out working on radios, hey, basically put it back together, okay? Just like it came out. It was the bottom part that has the lug, the terminals on it, and then the rubber piece, and then the other piece on the bottom, okay? You want it to be like that. You get it situated like you need it. What you want to do next, what you want to do next, let's get you up here real close. Let's just say like on the back side of this connector right here, right there, right there. You want to take your small drill bit. Uh, let's see, what size is it? I'm using a 560 out, 564th bit, okay? You will take that bit and go right in behind that, go straight down, take your time drilling. You want to drill through this whole section and do that for the other terminals. And uh, on this capacitor here is a little different. Um, the ground, let's see, this is, I'm sorry. Uh, let's see, yeah, yeah, I'll fall with you. I'm sorry. Four two, uh, 20 microfarad 450 caps has got to go back in here. So you want to drill a hole behind each terminal. And let's see if I can do one without destroying something. My brand new Dremel that I got for my birthday. Can you see? No, you cannot. We'll go right here. Taking my time. Let the drill do the work. You don't want to rush this. Really need a piece of wood under there. I don't like drilling into my work bench. Let's okay, we got that. Two down, two to go. Final one. Let the drill do the work. Okay. Now the only other thing drill you gotta hold you gotta drill is for the ground. You have to pull your ground through here somehow or another. Because there's nowhere to solder to except for that ring. And what I've decided to do is I just use a little short jumper wire here. And I'll attach it to the center grounds of the capacitors. And I'll show you what I do with that in a minute. And I'll just run that through that hole, make a little loop, and attach it to the ground ring. Uh, and solder it to that. It's the simplest way. Uh, but it works. So I'm changing bits on my, uh, my Dremel. Go up a little bit in size. love this Dremel. Alright, there's a big hole in here where uh, apparently it's for uh, pressure relief. And I use it. Alright. Now the prep work's almost done. This makes a mess, by the way. I didn't feel like going out to my workshop, my mechanical workshop, I guess you could call it. Now, if you look on the bottom, real close, you see four little holes. Five, actually. Yeah, I, I gotta quit doing that. I'm putting holes in my workbench. I should know better than that. That's very, that's very uncool. So, get you some tape, your favorite tape. It doesn't matter. Just something to hold the stuff together. And what you want to do is get your capacitors lined up. I like to take the grounds and point them together. I usually point them to the inside. In this case, there's four capacitors. 
I bunch all the grounds up together on the inside on this one. Just take your time. Yeah, you'll get a little aggravated and you'll bump it with your with your hand, get it all messed up. So but you wanna you gotta have control of them somehow or another, so just tape them. Yeah, man. You gotta have control. That's all you really need to do. Now we got that. Now what you do is fold your positive side of your capacitor. Fold them down out of your way so you can take, put this in your hand, take all these leads, twist them together. Kind of like twisting the fuses together on a bunch of firecrackers. Take your hot soldering iron, minus 660 degrees, crimped it, now I'm going to clip that, make it look pretty. And if you do this right, you don't have to worry about it. Yeah, some people worry about insulation and all that, but if you do this right, and you ain't going to worry about all that. <clears throat> How are we going to do this? This capacitor just happens to be the same values uh, in all uh, four sections. So it doesn't matter what lead, what positive lead comes out, they're all the same. Of course, if this is 20, 30, 50 or something like that, or 20, 30, 15, 10 or something like that, then you would have to orient your capacitors that way when you push it through there, that it would match the uh, symbols on the bottom of the capacitor. If that makes any sense. If it does, just somebody tell me. I'm gonna lay it over here so I can get a little bit better solder on it. And no, I don't worry about mechanical connections on solder. There is a way to do it, there's a proper way and all that mess, but that will last forever. Longer than these capacitors will. So now that we got that, it's time to put it together. Get your leads here. This is all the positive leads. And what we're going to do, take this white wire, shove it through the hole, the large hole. The large hole happens to be an eighth inch. Remember the other smaller holes that was right behind the terminal for 564. <coughs> we're going to take, find these holes and put these capacitor leads through there until we get them lined up like we want. Kind of take your time, yeah, you gotta have patience, something I'm not well known for. Push them in there. One thing that I should have done on this one here, is, uh, see this what you want to do you see how I got that it ain't going nowhere but what you want to do is this lead right here you want this lead enough of this lead here to where you can push it through this hole and bend it over and that'll hold this thing in place till you put it together so and I should apparently have plenty of that so I'm just gonna bend this lead goes through the hole bend it back down and I need to knock some solder off this one here. It also helps your job do a little due diligence and clean the freaking holes out in the terminal before you start messing with this. Otherwise, you got to do it after it's all taken apart. And it's rather, rather flimsy right now. Very delicate. 
bend those little bend your leads through there. Right. Do all four of them, and it's important to do this. Take your time. Get in a hurry. Three out of four done. Now find number four. Now when you put all your leads and everything back on your uh, on these turbines, make sure you solder this these well. Alright. Now looks like a smell fireworks, doesn't it? But it's ready to go back in the can. Got the can cleaned out. You just take this little dude, drop it right back in the can. Take your time, it'll go in. This is why I told you all ago that you got to have all the pieces that come out of it. You sure do, and I want to take. And you get your ring, go put your lead through there, your ground lead. Now, remember that little mark you made all ago to orient the thing. Orient, find your notch, which is right there. And there's a reason why, and I'll show you in a minute. Now that you got it in there. So what you want to do next is find your hammer. A little small ball pin, something precision, tacking hammer, whatever. Put a little pressure down on one side of it. Tap it, you want to just get it started. Just bend it over slightly, don't beat the snot out of it. Now that you got it started, put it on the edge of your table and just kind of get it right in the edges. Kind of when you hit. Do like that right there. It's just an old body work trick. Now, how they work metal. It'll make that metal, if you do it right, it'll make that metal stretch back in a position that it's used to, that it was made with that been like for 50 something years. You try not to overdo it the beating then. You just gotta keep rotating it. And this will actually lock this thing back in place just like it was from the factory. And like I said at the beginning of this video, I've never actually have been this successful doing one of these things because I really just went at it. I really just went at it too much of gorilla style. Now that you got it rolled over, now just come back up here and lightly tap it. I didn't have to cut the top off or anything. That looks really good. Now that I've got that part done, now I can put the uh, plastic back around it. You ain't got to, but I just choose to. What it came with is what I'm going to put back on it. It did suffer a little damage. Voila! I'm going to put it back in the uh, device that I'm working on. Won't take me just a few minutes to do that.
And then once we do that, I'm going to test it with my capacitor tester. Verify that it is proper, nothing's messed up or shorted. And I'm done. So I'll bring you back when I get it in the unit. Okay, I am done with that capacitor. Zoom out a little bit. There. Right there. Zoom in and get a little more detail. And I'm done. Yes, yeah, a little insulation got marred there, but it's fine. Here's that ground lead right here coming out, going to this ground. Uh, everything's in place. Everything's using the same terminals it did 50 years or 60, whatever. And I made sure that when I soldered, that I soldered the leads, the capacitor leads coming up through the holes that we drilled. So this capacitor is done. I have now done one, two, three capacitors. I have two left. I have this capacitor left right here, and I have this capacitor left right here to do. And this one will be ready to test. Anyway, that's that for this video. Thanks for watching. Hope you learned something. Adios.